Uh, did the engine just grenade itself? Because no oil pressure going through the engine, that's really bad. So toward the end of the last video we posted on the channel, the reveal video with our new to us 1961 Cessna 210A, I said not to miss this video because it was gonna be a good one. Not good for us, definitely not. Bad things happen. And yes, I have some video clips that I'll be rolling throughout. I'm just gonna say right now that I'm so happy how the course of events played out because it could have been so, so much worse. Literally, it could have ended in, yeah. I won't even say it, but bad things happening. So let's go ahead and get into this. By the way, I had the Mercedes-Benz 220 uncovered today and I figured I'd mention it in the video because this is our oldest car and the Cessna 210 is our oldest airplane. They started making the Cessna 210 in 1960 and this car they made all the way up till 1955. Only five years apart, yet the 210 looks like kind of any other airplane and this looks like an ancient World War II Mercedes. I know I don't usually show the cars here on the aviation channel, but this one's too cool not to show. Suicide doors, red interior. The wood is so cool on the dash with all the old radios and dials and gauges and listen to this door thud. They don't make them like they used to. Okay, so where do we begin here? The past few days have been chaotic with so many different emotions, starting off with such a high, such a thrilling moment of buying another airplane and yes before you race down to the comment section um this was another sight unseen purchase uh without a pre-purchase inspection by a mechanic and without even laying eyes on the plane before committing to buy it yeah i know do as we say not as we do not ideal but that's how we roll that's how we get the good deals and that's how we move quick and buy these planes the emotions were high this is great the plane is awesome, exceeding our expectations. We make it down to South Texas to go look at that other Cessna 210 that we also bought sight unseen with no inspections and anything. Great, two for two. Um, that video is still coming. Holy smokes, do not miss that video. The cheapest 210 in the world by far. Price of like Honda Civic for a Cessna 210 that flies. Yeah, you're not gonna wanna miss that video. We had to leave that other 210 down in South Texas while we're finishing up some paperwork on it, but the flight home and that whole vlog will be coming soon when we go grab it. But for now, as of three days ago, we're flying back just the one Cessna 210 and it's about a 10 hour day of flying all the way home to Arizona. We made it in just one stop, again, fuel economy on that thing's pretty crazy with 80 gallon fuel tanks. I mean, it'll go a long, long way. So everything's going great. As you saw at the end of last video, the sun is setting. Well, it's already set by the time we're in New Mexico and we still have some massive mountainous terrain ahead of us. It's never really a good idea to take a single engine piston over mountains at night, especially a single engine piston that you just bought the day before and you don't really know the plane super well. Will it probably work out fine? Probably, but overall it's just not the best decision you could probably make. This is all hindsight 2020 thinking and you'll you'll find out here why, but. So we are approaching this massive mountainous terrain. It's got some pretty high peaks. I think as high as like 11,700 I showed uh, last video when I was zooming in on four flight. Now these mountains can easily be dodged if you have decent avionics or four flight. But again, when it's pitch black outside, it's, it's sketchy, you can't really see things. We had Jay and Chris up front, two really good pilots. So we were in good hands and the plane made it no problem. We landed in Scottsdale late at night and we got a big dinner and went to bed because that was a long day of flying, but we got it done, we got it home. Everything is just feeling great, like too good to be true, right? Got the smoking deal on this plane, it made it all the way back. We were so impressed with the plane that we felt confident enough to fly up to Montana to immediately begin training in it. Like I said, the planes that we have right now for training are all currently down, waiting on maintenance, paperwork, or parachutes. Mm. So we weren't able to do any training. That's kind of why we bought this plane. It was a good deal and it was in annual and it's something that we could immediately start logging some time in. So we had this trip up to Montana plan to go grab uh, a really nice Rolex, a new watch. And we're like, oh, let's fly up there and log a bunch of time. Sean was available, our flight instructor. And he said, yeah, I'm down to do the trip. That sounds like a lot of fun. Taking the new bird up to Montana, beautiful scenery. That was the plan. This morning, as you'll find out here, that quickly will not be the case. So before we go up to Montana, Sean wanted to familiarize himself with the new plane. So Jay then says, yeah, it's a great idea. Like, let's go flying. I just flew it for two days. I have a great experience with it. I know all the little intricacies and I can just familiarize 
you with the plane, you know, talking to Sean. So, so they're both agreeing that they should go flying and I'm on board too. I'm like, that's a good idea. You all get comfortable because if I'm gonna be logging time and flying this plane, I want my instructor to, you know, be really comfortable with the plane and have two thumbs up before we go embark on a thousand mile journey. I said, go get some gas. It's a little long gas. You know, there's some cheap gas over in Chandler. Knock out two birds with one stone. Get gas and uh, Sean can fly the plane for an hour or two, rip around the valley, whatever he wants to do. I don't know if you guys are as interested in like original car smells as I am, but I wish you could take a whiff of this 1974 Porsche 914. It's all original, like one owner car. It just smells like classic Porsche. Okay, I'm probably weird, but it's got that like 944, early air-cooled 911 smell, and it's just, mm, so good. Had to switch up the scenes on you, you know, make sure you don't fall asleep here, but please follow along. We're almost there. Keep eating that popcorn, grab a drink, we're getting to the good stuff. So the plan is in place. Jay and Sean are gonna take the plane up, go get gas, go fly around, do some training before we hit the skies to Montana the next morning. That was the plan and let's just say things did not go to plan. Well, actually about the first 30 minutes or so went to plan. They left Scottsdale, uneventful, flew down to Chandler, no issues. Then they filled it full of fuel and still no issues until they went for that first startup after getting gas. And this is where the problems begin. I'll just roll a clip that Jay took in that moment, showing you guys what's going on. Roll the clip. A little bit of an update for you. Uh, as you can see, I'm sitting in the airplane, one of the two tens that we just bought in Texas, but it is not flying. Uh, made it to Scottsdale last night at around uh, 10 p.m. Absolutely zero issues. The plane flew great. Plan was for Jeffrey, Christian, and Sean to leave at like 5 a.m. tomorrow morning and fly to Montana. Get to the airplane, check it all out, do a pre-flight. Uh, I noticed it's at eight quarts of oil. And we noticed that yesterday, like our sweet spot was nine quarts. So we added a quart, didn't think anything of it. And uh, do a run up, everything looks good. Oil temp, oil pressure, everything's doing great. And uh, continue on, take off. Uh, temperatures are a little bit high, but again, it's 106 degrees in Phoenix. You know, kept the mixture just full rich. Continued on to Chandler, zero issues there. We land in Chandler, uh, taxi over to the self-serve, fill it up, and continue on our way back to Scottsdale. Uh, as we were starting it up, we're doing just that standard hot start procedure. We finally got it started and um, I noticed uh, this leg, I was sitting in the right seat, Sean was gonna fly from the left seat. So I had a perfect view of the JPI engine monitor and I noticed the oil pressures like straight from the green starts dropping uh, significantly. At that point, the engine just really started to sputter, shut off. So we get out kind of trying to check it out and we notice that the underbelly and on the ground, huge, huge, huge puddle of oil. Like, okay, obviously we can't go. So we towed it over to one of the tea spots, went and grabbed dinner, came back like an hour and a half later. We just measured the oil with the dipstick. It's about a quart and a half lower than what it was when we left in Scottsdale. So it just lost a quart and a half, but we don't know why. Um, we have not tried another engine restart. You know, it's leaking oil. We're not even gonna mess with that at this point. So yeah, that's kind of the update. Called Christian, he came over to Chandler and um, just took off the cowling. And uh, we see quite a bit of oil in the engine bay, uh, still on the ground in the engine bay, coming primarily from the oil filter. Um, so yeah, we're not flying it back to Scottsdale. Obviously going to leave the airplane here. They're not going to Montana tomorrow morning. Uh, we're gonna have to obviously have somebody check this out and uh, kind of go from there. So there you go, that's something you never ever want to have happen to your airplane. A massive puddle of oil underneath it and oil all over the belly. It using a quart and a half of oil in just 20 minutes. That is not normal. That plane burned like one quart in 10 hours of flying. And then now it burned, burned, vacated from its system a quart and a half in just 20 minutes. So clearly that's a problem, but the bigger problem here is that the engine shut off when the oil pressure dropped to zero. That's bad for so many reasons. Okay, number one, uh, did the engine just grenade itself and it like locked up because no oil pressure going through the engine, that's really bad. So, okay, of course I'm worried about that, but I'm more worried about the fact that if this all happened, whatever the heck happened, we're still trying to figure it out. We have some good ideas. I'm gonna mention it in just a minute, but if this happened, 10 minutes prior, 
they would have been in the air. Going over Tempe, ASU, downtown Phoenix at like very low altitude. If something happens, like boom, you're landing on a street. That's scary to think about. But what's even more scary to think about that if this happened one hour prior, one hour of flight time prior to when it did, we would have lost oil pressure over those mountains in the middle of the night in a single engine piston with four people on board. Oh my gosh. Do you see now why I'm making a big deal of this? I swear the comments are gonna be like, dude, it happened on the ground. Like it's not that big of a deal. It's not an emergency. Didn't happen in the air. Clickbait, I'm, I'm out of here. This was minutes away from like disaster or if they wouldn't have gotten fuel that night. Guys, we were about to fly the plane, just, just send it with Sean up to Montana, but he's the one who said, you know what, no, let me, go, let me go fly it around with Jay. Had we just parked it that night and then left this morning as planned, not knowing that the engine was about to lose all oil pressure, dump all the oil out of the belly and stop, then we would have been probably right over, you know, those mountains in Northern Arizona. Boom, we would have been looking for a road again. Luckily it would have been during the day, I guess, but still, when your engine has zero oil pressure, please comment down below, how long do you have before your engine will blow up? I've heard one minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, five minutes. Please, if you are an AMP, IA, or just a mechanic in general, car mechanic, and it transfers over to planes, how long will an engine last with no oil pressure? And, and you could probably also say no oil within not long, there would have been no oil in the plane. How long before the engine blows up? Once again, like I said in the beginning, I'm glad that everything happened the way it did, when it did. We got very lucky on the timing and we got so lucky that the airplane was just idling there after they got fuel when it decided to lose all oil pressure. So there was no load on the engine, the engine sputtering and like they say, dying out. We don't know if there's like engine damage and stuff now. Okay, I'm trying to channel my inner Tom Selleck. So we're gonna go with the 308 in the background now. Okay, let's set up the camera. Actually, I gotta come over here and the cars are so closely packed together, literally every single one is touching and I can't go that way since there's no room to walk that I'm just gonna have to climb over the bumper. Okay, okay. Carb 308, that engine is a heck of a lot of fun. Okay, nice, keeping you guys on your toes. I'm on an old car wave today, so uh, we got all the oldies. 79, 308, carbed, coupe. Okay, I obviously wasn't there, but you know, trust the old internet mechanic me, I hop on Google, I start doing research about engine oil pressure dropping in an IO470. I'm just trying to find any leads that I can get. And, and I asked Jay and Sean, I'm like, you know, while Christian's on his way there, you know, take a look around, like, can you see where any of this oil's coming from? And he did see it was coming from like one area. And that one spot was in the region of the spin-on oil filter STC adapter. So I'm like, okay, I mean, that could make sense. What if the oil filter somehow started to get loose on that spin-on adapter housing, that oil started just you know, pouring out of the filter, and of course, you lose that pressure because there's now that gap and oil just gushing out. So I'm like, okay, maybe the filter got loose. You know, that happens, but then again, that's the whole point of safety wire, and that thing was safety wired on there. So I'm like, what is going on? But it at least pointed me in the right direction. So last night, I just dive down this rabbit hole of oil filters and oil filter adapter issues with these engines, and I just start getting lead after lead after lead, and I find some stories of remarkably similar symptoms. It was very alarming, let's just say. I'll, I'll read this article, and it's very sad what's happened because of this issue. Savvy Aviation posted, NTSB warns of engine failures caused by stc oil filter adapters. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you, if you don't understand, this, this airplane from 1961, it's so old that it didn't have an oil filter from the factory, it just had an oil screen. Clearly, we learn over the decades that it's beneficial to have an oil filter instead of an oil screen, so this adapter allows you to run a filter on an older engine that didn't come with a filter, if that makes sense. So anyway, it's very common. A lot of people have these and apparently issues can arise from them. So let me keep reading. So in mid-July, we sent our subscribers an email titled, Yikes, No Oil Pressure, that described a very close call that George, one of our clients, had with his Cessna 182 from Southern California to Lake Tahoe. 
At about halfway through the planned three hour flight, the pilot observed the oil pressure gauge was reading zero. He reduced power and luckily made an uneventful emergency landing at Mojave Airport. Subsequent inspection revealed that the STC oil filter adapter on the Skylane's Continental 0470 engine had vibrated loose, chewed up its gasket, and started letting engine oil leak overboard. Ultimately, the low oil level decreased to the point that it was below the bottom of the dipstick. The oil filter adapter was a Tempest model C6LC-L manufactured by Stratus Tool Incorporated. Okay, blah, 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 blah. And they just said how George was lucky. On May 1st, 2019, another Cessna 182 lost oil pressure. The engine quit and during the ensuing emergency landing, the airplane collided with a power line near Mill Creek, California. One passenger was fatally injured and the pilot and other passenger were seriously injured. About a month later, on June 10th, 2019, a Cessna 210D lost oil, lost power, and collided with terrain near Ramona, California. The NTSB determined that both of these crashes involved the same sort of failure of the oil filter adapter that George had. This now has the NTSB's attention. They are aware of at least 11 accidents and incidents that have occurred during the past 15 years caused by these oil filter adapters vibrating loose and chewing up their gaskets. Four of these accidents involved fatal or serious injuries. It turns out that the NTSB has been bugging the FAA for 18 months to address this problem, but to date the FAA has been non-responsive. Finally, on November 30th, 2020, the NTSB issued a formal safety recommendation asking the FAA to issue the airworthiness directive requiring repetitive inspections of the adapters to ensure they are properly installed, have not come loose, and have not chewed up their gaskets. Okay, final switch up. We got the remaining old cars in the garage. 1995 Ferrari 355, six-speed manual, Spider, really cool car. And then the 1973, I think, uh, Porsche 914, Shalon, slant nose and then a 986 Boxster. Okay, anyway, final part of this video. So, so in this savvy article, they went on to say that they believe the design is not the best design and it's inherently flawed. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not a spin-on oil filter adapter, STC expert. So the idea of having this adapter that allows you to run a filter is awesome. It's just unfortunate that so many um, incidents have occurred. They actually said, ironically, back in 1996, the FAA issued an airworthiness directive 96-12-22 against a similar retrofit oil filter adapter from Continental Aircraft that was manufactured by Cessna. They're saying that, come on, FAA, you have an AD out for the original Cessna ones from the 90s, which had issues with spinning off and you know losing oil and oil pressure yet you don't have an AD out for these current modern ones. Well, this was in 2019 when that was posted. It looks like in early 2022, they did officially put out an AD for these filters, this one included. And in that AD, you can read it if you want all the specifics, but I guess it has a torque value that you have to torque it down to. It has the specific gaskets you need to buy for the upper and the lower part of it. I think one's metal, one's fiber. And then also they want the mechanic to put this red uh, seal, like a, uh, a torque seal, so you know if it's been loosened because that seal would be broken, if that makes sense, like a wax seal, something like that. I don't know. That's what the AD was all about. And this plane, I went through the logs, it did have the AD complied with. So I do not understand if the AD was just done literally like two months ago, and all of the gaskets were replaced and the oil change was done at the annual, why would it be again having this terrible issue that the AD was put out to resolve, right? That's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. So this is optimistic me hoping that it's just something to do with this adapter. Also, there could be a crack in the adapter. We're not exactly sure. Or somehow at that annual when they did the AD, they over torqued it. And just like they said in that savvy article, it kind of, um, squishes the gasket, causing there to be that gap for the oil to get out from, or the engine just grenaded itself. I, I don't really know, we don't know. Luckily, once again, we're so lucky where it happened because it happened at Chandler Airport. Chandler Air Services currently has the plane, and I'll roll a clip here of them, Christian and Jay. They went down there to hand off the keys. What's going on, you guys? It is day two, so Christian and I came back uh, to Chandler Airport. It's daylight, so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, last time you guys were updated was last night. Ended up just putting everything back together. Couldn't really figure out what was happening. And uh, yeah, we left. So here we are back at Chandler Airport. We have the cowling off. Uh, we took our information last night of the oil leak coming somewhere around the oil filter housing. Then Jeffrey read up on that last night. And we're thinking that that's exactly what's happened. The uh, gaskets are leaking. Maybe torque did not uh, maintain perfectly correctly, but. So if you guys look over here, 
kind of near the oil filter. We saw last night underneath, the oil was kind of just dripping right under there. And then if we look right onto there, onto that like the metal box right over there, you can see a lot of the oil, um, which has continued just underneath, um, all the way just up the underbelly. Chandler Air Service was great. They uh, dropped what they were doing for a second and came walked out to the plane and heard out our uh, non A and B opinion. They came to a very similar conclusion. Seems just like some some gaskets on that uh, oil filter adapter. See if they have it in stock. They're checking. Alrighty. Shout out to Chandler Air Service. And they were like, yeah, bring it in. You know, no guarantee we can fix it today, uh, but we can definitely look at it. They're gonna start with the adapter, see what's wrong, take it apart maybe the problem will lie there or if it's something more than that then they're gonna have to dig deeper and the bill's gonna get much much bigger but luckily we have a good set of eyes looking at the plane i'll have an update for you guys soon on what the fix is but just really scary stuff especially after googling this issue and and finding that there have been numerous fatal accidents that have been linked back to a spin-on oil adapter stc like one little part causing people to die, I mean like, and it just goes to show the importance of watching your instruments. It'd be great to have like an enunciator. Oil pressure. If you don't have fancy glass to tell you and to flash red, then it's all about just catching it immediately because like I said, you probably just have a matter of minutes before that engine's gonna blow up. So it's most certainly an emergency scenario. Please comment down below your thoughts or please comment down below if you have a continental powered Cessna that happens to have this spin on adapter STC. Be sure to let me know if you've run into any issues with it. Again, that's what I'm thinking. The shop at least has an inkling that it's something to do with that as well. So fingers crossed, it's just some simple fix and that we don't need a new IO470 engine. That would be terrible. That would be so bad. Buying an airplane and then one day later, having it blow up and needing a new engine, that, ooh. I hope you don't see this video as me like overreacting or trying to cause drama. This is genuine, like real scary stuff. Like it, it could have been really bad. I'm not overinflating that. Again, if it happened one hour prior, I don't even wanna say it. So um, there you guys go. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned, give me a couple days. I'll probably have an update on the plane and hopefully we'll be flying it again soon if it's a quick fix. So. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you supporting all the videos. Go ahead and head down to the comment section. I know it's gonna be full of informative comments and the comments saying that we're complete idiots and it's about time our luck has caught up with us buying all these cheap planes sight unseen. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. December's gonna be packed with awesome videos. Stay tuned for those. Really appreciate you guys watching. See you in the next one. Say that it feels right.